Hello and welcome to a video in a series on data structures. Today we're going to be talking about dynamic arrays. So one of the main problems with arrays is that once you fill them up, you can't really do much more. Since arrays are a series of sequential blocks in memory, it's pretty hard to ask for more space once you already have it. For example, let's say I have an array of size 3 and I realize I really need an array of size 5. Well, you can't really do that because while the fourth block is open, the fifth block is not. And so we can't just intrude on that memory space. The solution ends up being to create a new array of the size that you need and then copying over the old contents. So let's go ahead and create an array of size 5. And now we can go ahead and copy over each of the old contents. And now we can go ahead and delete the previous array. And now we have an array of size 5, which is what we wanted. But wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to do that every time? That's the idea behind a dynamic array, or in the Java language, an array list. Essentially, they do all of this work for you behind the scenes while offering performance nearly as good as an array. Like arrays, dynamic arrays have three core operations, insertion, deletion, and retrieval. You can also perform searches on dynamic arrays, but we'll talk more about the search algorithms later. So let's say I've created a dynamic array, and its internal array has its contents as follows. Three empty blocks starting at address 100. Let's do some insertions to see what the running time is. So the first insertion is just like inserting into any old array. Same with the second insertion, and even the third. But on the fourth insertion, we run out of room. We're going to need to allocate a new array. Now in most languages, reallocation usually uses a growth factor of around one and a half. For our purpose, we're going to use two. So we're going to double the space of whatever the previous size was. In this case, we're going to go from three to six. Okay, we've, we've had our new array now. So now we have to copy over all of the contents. So that took three computations to copy over the previous contents, plus a fourth computation to insert the node that we wanted to insert. Now we can get and delete our previous. Okay, so let's review. The first three insertions took just one computation each. They ran in constant time. The fourth insertion, however, required copying the previous three integers over, and then inserting the fourth. Since there's four total things in the list, we can say this runs in, in linear time. It runs O of n. That means that whenever your internal array is filled, you're going to have to pay O of n time, but otherwise you only have to pay O of 1 time. If we average this out, we find that our algorithm will run pretty close to constant time, as showed by this graph. This is called amortized cost, meaning that every now and again you have to pay a lot, but over time it levels out. Deletion runs in constant time just like an array. This makes intuitive sense because deleting from an array essentially is just removing its value. Retrieval also runs in constant time just like an array. This also makes sense because all we're doing is referencing the internal array. So to reference the value at the first position of the array, all we have to do is read, which is a constant time operation. One of the main drawbacks of dynamic arrays is that they're very inefficient memory-wise. Think of it this way. Let's say you only need seven spots in your array, and you currently have six. When you go to do the seventh insertion, it's going to double the size of your array, meaning you're going to have an array of size 12. Do this again, you'll have an array of size 24, and it keeps doubling. So over time, you're gonna, you might end up with more space than you could ever possibly use. We generally use larger growth factors than just making one extra space, because it would make it very costly to constantly copy things over. So whenever you use a dynamic array, you're essentially sacrificing a good amount of memory efficiency for both speed and convenience. Typically, we use dynamic arrays whenever we don't know the final size of an array. For example, let's say you are asking users for inputs, and every time they put an input in, you put it into an array. It's very hard to figure out what the size of the array should be until you know all of the data that you put into the array. And thus, it's convenient to be able to reallocate space over and over and copy the contents over until you know the final size of the array. We're going to learn another data structure in the next video that will make this even more efficient. I have prepared code samples for dynamic arrays for integers and generic types. You can go ahead and access this code via the links on the video right now. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below 
and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.